Describe yourself in three words. Fun, playful, kind. Do you have any tattoos? Three. What are they and what do they mean? I have a cross right here for Jesus. My ampersand for Joe and Kemp. Triangle for cuteness. <laughs> Who's a better driver, you or Joe? Jordan, for sure. No hesitation. Would you rather be able to speak every single language in the world or talk to animals. Oh, talk to animals, easy. Really? Yeah, for sure. I think I'd rather speak every language. Animals are more important than oh. humans. <laughs> How many pull-ups can you do in a row? Maybe like 10. Really? I would think more than that. Probably like 10, that's probably all I have in me. I can do one. What is a secret fear you have? Secret fear? Um, now, geckos. Geckos? <laughs> geckos crawling in my... Nose. In your nostrils. <laughs> Who is your celebrity crush? Margot Robbie. Ooh. She's a hottie. We just found out she was Australian today. Yes, which makes her even better. Even better. What did you eat for breakfast? Avocado eggs Benedict with some pancakes and a protein shake. You're eating good. Polka dots or stripes? If I had to pick one, probably polka dots. Are you a morning or a night person? Night for sure. I'm trying to become more of a morning person, but night. Same. Have you ever tasted soap? Ooh, I have. Was it because you said a bad word? Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, I was back talking to my mother. How old were you? Mm -hmm. about, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So that was probably like 10. Okay. Are you usually early to things or late? Late. I feel like everything gets to the south last. But what about like arriving to like a, a meeting or an event? At uh, late. Awesome. Late. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite season? Um, summer. Who is your biggest fashion inspiration or a fashion icon that you aspire to be like? Kendall Jenner, for sure. Name one of the seven dwarfs. Sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest food you've ever eaten? Squid. That's crazier than me. Oh gosh, nothing crazy. It's kind of sad. I can't even think of anything. Like, I can think of fried fried things. things. Yeah. <laughs> like broccoli? <laughs> what is your dream car? G-Wagon. White, black, what color? Probably black. What is your guilty pleasure? Maybe like a guilty pleasure TV show and also maybe a dessert or something that you love. Brownie and ice cream, like massive brownie and ice cream. Okay. And TV show, Grey's Anatomy. Are you the one who told me you always eat a pink Starburst at night? Yes. <laughs> Just two, one? Two. Two pink stars. Every night? Pretty much every night. It's your little treat? Yeah. Um, after chocolate. After chocolate. Okay. So who's funnier, you or Joe? Me, of course. <laughs>
location, get kind of inspiration, the vibe I'm feeling for it. So we do plan them mostly. Where are you getting those like shots that you're like, oh, I kind of want to create something similar to this. Where are you finding those? Mostly Pinterest, yeah. So I do follow some accounts or even just websites that, um, clothing websites or whatever that I'll kind of get inspiration from. So Pinterest, usually Instagram. What are some of your favorite sites that you like, like even just like fashion websites or anything yeah. that you get inspo from? Um, Verge Girl. Um, such cute just, stuff. Yeah, especially for like summer. It's like such a good like summer vibe. Um, ASOS. I usually say ASOS, but ASOS? I say ASOS I, I and I like made myself like don't say it because no one else says that. I don't know if it's ASOS or ASOS. I just say ASOS. Yeah, ASOS has like just cute kind of like vibes too. Just like even things like like the hair, like how they like do the hair with the outfit. I'm like, oh wait, I love that. Like I love how. Totally. Yeah. And you can get good styling. Yes. Like inspo sure. from that for yes. sure how they pair different items and stuff. Yes. So when you're looking for a location, are you just kind of driving around, seeing what catches your eye? Like, what are you specifically looking for in a location for a photo shoot? Yeah, so it kind of depends on where we're shooting. If it's somewhere we're very familiar with, like Dallas, we'll kind of map out the locations and see what location fits best with what outfit. Um, if it's somewhere like Bali we haven't been before, you just kind of know everywhere is going to be beautiful. So right. then at that point, we just kind of go around, see what we think is going to work best with each outfit. So are you finding those locations, like you said, in Dallas, you're mapping out. Are you finding those locations on Instagram mostly so, or how? Not really. That's kind of actually Jordan's um, delegation or his job that he yeah. kind of does in finding the locations. Um, usually it'll either be spots we just have been to before or he'll just kind of, he does get on Instagram, I guess, and then kind of find the locations there, but he'll just kind of, yeah, just do research and and find where it's gonna be best. Yeah, well you kind of already answered this, but are you planning your specific outfits to a location or do you find a location and then you're like, okay, what's gonna look cute with that location? So I feel like because we do travel to other places more and it's not something that we're surrounded where we live by like amazing locations where I'm like, oh, I wanna shoot there. It's mostly planning the location around the outfit. So just whatever we feel like is gonna fit best, whether that be something that's a more simple backdrop, if my outfit's more complex or patterned, or right. if that's something that's busier because my outfit's a bit simpler. Right, and this is something that we were briefly talking about before, but I was saying, I feel like every iPhone shot, I mean any camera shot as well, but like your Instagram, sorry, you made me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do it again, Life. I want that behind the scenes. I love it, but I just got nervous. <laughs> Distracted. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> but I feel like for any shot that you're posting on Instagram, don't you feel like there has to be like a point of interest, whether that be your outfit or your location? Because I know for me, if I just have like a whatever outfit on that I'm not super excited about, and then I'm shooting in a location that's also like really simple, I'm kind of like, not obsessed with the photos usually. Yeah. Whereas if I have an outfit that's more, that I'm more excited about, I don't really care as much about the location because it's like, I feel like I could be shooting in front of an all white wall and it would still be cute because the outfit is like something to, do you know what I'm trying yes, to say? Yes, absolutely, no, yeah. Me and Jordan actually talk about this all the time. Like we'll be styling, or I'll be styling the outfits and I tell them like, I feel like this is so good. Like it could just be shot. Just Anywhere. like you said, a white wall, something very like simple. And then you come to places like this and it's like you can really just stand anywhere and the location makes the picture beautiful. So the outfit kind of doesn't matter. So it's definitely, I agree, kind of like one or the other. And I think another thing is accessorizing because a lot of times I'll have an outfit that I'm like, I'm not super stoked right. on, but then yeah. I'll put like a bunch of jewelry with it and a hat and a purse. I'm like, yes. oh, now it's a cool photo. Yes, absolutely. I've kind of gotten that way too. I feel like now like throwing a big hoop, top knot, like, hat it does like completely change and spice up the outfit to make it capture so much better are there ever situations where you and jordan are shooting and it's just not working out like you'd planned and if so <laughs> what? i'm just remembering today when that <laughs> happened actually this is one time that i looked like an emperor and it was terrible so if it's ever not working out for you like what do you do? Do you just scrap it or are you like, whatever? Or do you try and make it work? Like, is Jordan like, okay, let's switch up the angle. Like how, if it's just the vibe is not happening, like right. what do you do? Yeah, I feel like on my end, I'll see, I'll follow other Instagrammers and I'm like, 
oh, they make it look so easy. And I feel like that's the kind of the goal. But then I come back to the reality of just what you're saying. Like there are plenty of times where you have to really work for the shot. You're trying something out. It's not working. We had that happen earlier. I had on a pink outfit. We were trying different spots. It just wasn't vibing. So if it's obviously a sponsor post, it is something that I have to make it work and figure out how to make it work. If it's something that's just... I picked out we'll try to switch up the location if that doesn't work then we may just save it for later or something like that and I think another good tip is to think about the vibe of the outfit sure. with the location because yeah. I don't know if, if you're shooting a nighttime picture and it's like with flash it's cute to have on maybe like a more edgy outfit like an oversized like sweater or an for oversized sure. hoodie or denim jacket whereas like if I was wearing this and I was right. trying to take a flash picture Absolutely. at night and it would not be the vibe so I feel for like sure. you have to match the Exactly. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> We're just like, yeah, match. Yeah, okay, yeah, you guys get it. <laughs> okay, so tips for editing. Do you have any favorite apps that you use for editing your Instagram photos? What do you like? To yeah. Do? I feel like the biggest game changer in editing, probably photos in general, but especially iPhone photos, is Lightroom. You're just able to completely adjust whatever highlights, shadows, all those different things that can completely transform a picture. Um, but just as far as like, everybody always asks me, what presets do you use? Do you use presets? And I don't use presets, um, but we just do use several editing apps. It's just a combination of all of those. Um, Visco is another one that I love. And it's actually, people ask me like, what filter do you use? It's not even specifically one. It just kind of depends on the picture, the lighting, the coloring. Um, and I'll use different ones. I use the E series a lot. I use some of the A series in Visco, so. You're right, like there's so many, I mean, there's tons of editing apps out there. Lightroom does, I feel like, give you so much control. Yes. And even the HSL sliders, like adjusting hue, saturation, and luminance yes. of specific colors right. is really nice to be able to do. So I think that Lightroom is like a really good place. I mean, even if you're not using presets, if you're just wanting to adjust like the, right. the photo itself, it's really good. All right, you guys, we are coming at you live with Jordan. He is the king of iPhoneography. He is the one behind all of Kemper's um, Instagram shots. He's the one taking the photos. So we're gonna get some of his um, tips, I guess, on taking iPhone photos. And I wanted to start by talking about locations. So yeah. I feel like you're more of the location guy. Like you're always the one searching for, sure. for them. Yeah. So what's your vibe? Like when you're searching for locations, Let's actually talk about this right now. Yeah, no, so we uh, we plan to shoot at this location right here. We love the setup of everything. There was uh, the flowers, the trees, those chairs are amazing. Um, but as you can see with the sun right now, that it's it has tons of just speckled shadows. Um, and so that's not gonna make for great lighting. You could potentially use this location where it's all- Shaded. Yeah, shaded. You can even see on me now that this area is just not gonna work just because of lighting. You don't want these splotchy bright parts because they'll sometimes get blown out and then the darker parts could even be too dark or whatever. So we're gonna search for like a more evenly lit area. Yeah, and I think like specifically for iPhone photos, that is, because sometimes with the camera, you can obviously make that work, like right. because it can capture more depth. But yeah. when you're talking about an iPhone photo, you're right, it's like sometimes things just get blown out, especially, especially if you're a beginner. Yes. And you're shooting iPhone photos, I would definitely go for just like even light all around. For sure, yeah, because you could make something artsy with shadows, people right. play with shadows, but uh, it's especially if you're beginning or just trying to do something simple where you know you can, can create a good photo, you wanna look for the even even lighting. So, okay, well should we try and find something else? This yeah. is evenly lit. The sun's coming in from this angle, and so you can see that this, this house or this room or whatever is casting a shadow on this entire area. So if we get our subject, Kemper. So yeah, we'll just get her to sit in this chair because it looks like it's evenly lit. As you can see, there's no sunspots on her. She's completely shadowed. Um, it's not dark though. She's still getting light because we're outside and there's open over here. So she's still getting a lot of light, but um, it's just even. There's no bright highlights. There's no dark shadows. And I think like that's another thing to be said is that there can be too dark where it's like there's not enough light and it's just right. not a good look. Right. But this is pretty and I think this is a good example of like good natural yeah. light. Yeah, so we're gonna start off 
You take your iPhone. A lot of people, a lot of times this lens area, it can have fingerprints. You're always carrying it and touching it. So I always take a soft material and just wipe it off before. Sometimes it'll cast haziness or something, but this just always makes it more clear. So when you're picking location, when you're choosing location, you kind of want to know like, what do you like about it? Do you, do you like just the chair or are you liking what's around it as well? Which in this case, we have a bunch of greenery on, this, on these wood beams and stuff. Since we like the whole area, we'll start further away. For angles, you'll see a lot of people just pull up their phone and they'll just hold it at chest level and start clicking the button or whatever. Um, a lot of times with Kemper being kind of lower, she's sitting lower, I'll actually, you'll, I can bend down and this can create more of a, you want the camera level with your subject. Definitely. You can, that's the easiest way. You know, you can create certain angles where you're getting up or you're getting down low, but just for, for best practice um, all around, it usually works best just to get your camera at the same level as your subject and then just kind of start to frame everything. You know, um, you don't want to be too down. You don't want to be too up. Get it level, hold it flat. It creates just a nice, natural looking image. And then we can talk about framing. So right here we can see that we have lines on the ground. You don't want to be crooked like this. Nothing crooked like this. So you want all the lines. I'm going to have that one level on the bottom. And then we can also scoop back and we can get some of the greenery. And you can see I now have a line at the top as well. And then also if you're playing with lines on the sides, once you start getting these bushes and you just want to make sure all of your your lines are lined up. You don't want anything crooked. We usually keep the subject in the center as well. So talking about framing, you can do stuff where your subject's off to the side, but we like to usually just keep the subject in the middle. Everything's balanced. Um, I feel like it just works well that way. So are we gonna start taking pics? Yes. Yeah. Kemper, she usually just does posing, um, but I mean, this is simple. She's sitting down, uh, she'll create cute, like her feet are crossed, that creates cuteness, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> Kemp? Um, and then she's just got the shirt hanging off, you know, whatever. But yeah, so we'll start with some further away, then we'll move closer. Um, so as I was talking about, I'm just lining things up, bottom lines, lines on the side of the frame. Um, and then you can kind of see some of the white detailing up there I'm getting in the image as well. And so I'll start and I'll just hold it still. You don't want to be moving around or anything, hold it still. You can also talk about lines of thirds. Uh, sometimes you can have the, the, you can have Kemper in the middle of the frame. Um, I'm actually gonna push her a little further towards the bottom. Um, I don't wanna get all of this grass down here. I think what's up and above her is a lot prettier. And then we'll take, uh, we'll take a couple here. And you can, you can see that Kemper's moving as I'm taking. So she'll pick a leg up, the chair will spin. <laughs> she's now facing away. This is not what we're going for, but she's back. I'll take a few here, I'll lower my angle. So, I, and it'll, it'll sometimes create a different aspect. Um, and then we just take a lot of images. Uh, probably while we're here, we'll take a total of 50 to 80 images. Some far away, some up close. Once I feel like I have, she's done all the poses here, I'll scoot a bit closer. And so this will be more, you're getting more details of her outfit. Um, you can now see more of the hat. You can see more of the background now as well that's inside the house. Um, as we we're further away, you can see more of what was outside. But as you get closer, your subject becomes more of the, the, focus. the focus of the image, yeah. And so I'll get down on her level make sure all my lines are straight again, and then I'll just start taking. And so Kemper will continue moving. Sometimes you can create th like the best poses or just her moving naturally. Yeah, whether that be looking down, looking up, see she looks to the side, picks a leg up, <laughs> does her <laughs> chair spin. We'll see ya. <laughs> um, but yeah, just moving naturally. So move your arms, cross her arms, touch the hat. Sometimes you'll get the best um, photos just from candid movement fixing her hair, something like that will create just, it's something natural, it's not posed. Also, you can get very up close detail shots. Right. And so this is less about the location and more about either Kemper or her jewelry, maybe the hat. We really like the hat because it has boho vibes or yeah. whatever. And so um, and I'll also, even get- also, if you're shooting like, yeah. a brand, like a sponsored, like a brand deal, for the jewelry, then it's like, sure. obviously that's something you'd no, be No, that's a great on, point, yeah. So if you have a jewelry shot or whatever, 
it's less about this, right. you know, this is all pretty or whatever. And maybe you could do even a carousel. Mm -hmm. um, I know we do lots of carousels. So you could show the location, or if it's a jewelry shop, we may do the jewelry shop first. Right. And then slide to the right or whatever so you can see where she's at, you know, where we're at, we're in Bali now, so you can see the beautiful uh, architecture or whatever. But right. yeah, so for a detailed shop, we'll come up close. And then this is just about, we will just, we'll take 20 shots here, and then we'll start above sometimes. I like this with the hat. Um, it's kind of covering up her face. Um, you can get down on her level and it creates just a different angle and we'll take all of these you don't have to just pick one and sit here and you know just yeah, take a hundred like at this angle above. yeah the above is very pretty. Really pretty you can even get closer and get artsy shots yeah, I love that. yes I love that. and so Kemper's still just moving naturally she'll look around look down sometimes you know the chair spins or whatever um, <laughs> So now that we've taken all the photos, we're gonna go through your process of like picking out the best photos. You've already picked out the ones you want, so how do you go about that? I just kind of start at the beginning and I actually add drag from the bottom um, across the little slider that just flips through the pictures and that's kind of how I'll look instead of just flipping like this. Right. So I'll just kind of drag it across the slider and I'm looking at lighting, I'm looking at my, especially from these far away shots, I'm looking at my body, if it's looking short, if it's looking long. Um, you know, what's my best angle. So that's how I'll kind of go through and select those. And then you just go and heart them? Yeah, so I'll favorite them. So there's that little heart in the middle at the bottom. And so I'll just click that on the ones that I like, and then I will go through and delete the rest of them. Which is so good, and I honestly, all I do the same thing where I favorite them, but then I forget to delete them. Yes. And so I just have hundreds and hundreds of photos. Yes that I don't need, yes, so that's same. really smart. To I just... used to do that, and I was like, I've got to figure something else out. Yeah, so now you have your favorites. Yes. And then, so let's let's edit a few of these. Okay. Maybe let's pick three favorites. All right, so we'll do this super far away shot, this one, and this super close detail okay. shot. Okay, cool. All right, so we pulled the photos into Visco, and now let's just get started. Yeah. I have a section where I kind of have all of my favorite filters. It's in my favorites. It just makes it a lot easier to kind of flip through and see what filter is going to look the best on that photo. So if I kind of already just know, I'll go straight to what I think. I do use a lot of the A series and also... <laughs> it's because you said series. Sorry. That always happens to me. And also um, the E series as well. It just kind of depends like on I know, what vibe I'm going for. And sometimes I'll actually mix too. So I may do a little bit of this and then save it. And then just pull it in again and put a bit more of something else Ooh, on that's it. That's a good tip. Yeah. So I'll do that, and then if I feel like it's looking a little maybe too green when I warmed it up, I'll go to the white balance and change the tint to a bit more red. And then when it's where I like it, I save it and move on to the next. Yeah. For being on my first ever Jason Marie TV episode. Thanks for having me. I know, people are gonna love it. Thank you for all your expertise. And now, we're ending with a challenge, and I challenge you to a staring contest. Ooh, I'm good at are this. Are you good at I them? really am. Oh, I'll like stare good. so long until I start crying. I'm Committed. not very good at these. <laughs> Hold on, I already 
already blinked that on accident. Us. I literally blinked. I like forgot what I was doing. <laughs> you know, you're like, I'm like. <laughs> okay, I got like too sidetracked. Okay, do it again. Okay. No smiling. Okay. Horrible. <laughs> it's like it's not even like distracting. I don't know. It's like my eyes. It's not even like it's hard, I'm hard for me. to look at. I'm like you're you just so ugly. <laughs> and that's all. Bye guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm horrible. Your pupils were going. Action. Cut. Kemper, did you have fun? I did. <laughs>